morning. I'm Councilman Keith Powers, and I'm chair of the Committee on Criminal Justice, and I am joined here today by Councilmember Carlin Rivera, Councilmember Alika Amprey Samuel, and Councilmember Donovan Richards. I think we're expecting a few, a few more here as well. We're here today to vote on four pieces of legislation relating to transgender, gender nonconforming, gender nonbinary, intersex individuals in DOC custody. This, these are results of a hearing we had a few months ago. The first two bills propose introductions number 1513 and 1514A by Councilmember Ayala aim to ensure that those housing units which house TGNC and BI populations have the same access to mental health and substance abuse treatments as the units that house cisgender populations. The third is Councilmember Moya's bill proposed introduction number 1530A which will require the department to issue comprehensive reporting on the application process for the transgender housing unit. And finally is Councilmember Rosenthal's bill, proposed 1535A, which requires the Board of Corrections to convene a task force to include formerly incarcerated individuals to address poli policies that related, related to the treatment of trans transgender, gender nonconforming, nonbinary, and intersex individuals in the Department of Correction. Uh, before I uh, bring it to a vote, I just wanted to, uh, Councilmember Rosenthal asked me to read just a quick statement from her on her legislation since you cannot be here today, and I will read it to you. Uh, the recent death of Lilene Polanco, a young transgender woman in custody at Rikers, represents a terrible failure by the city of New York. This tragedy underscores the need for greater accountability and transparency on how the city treats transgender, gender nonconforming, nonbinary, and intersex people in its custody. Councilmember Lowenthal's legislation intro 1535 will require the Board of Corrections to convene a task force to review the Department of Corrections policies relative to this particularly vulnerable population and make recommend recommendations for immediate improvement. Critically, this task force will bring people with lived experiences to the table as well as experts in transgender policy to ensure safe, humane, and respectful treatment of TGNC and BI persons in custody. This is one step of many that are necessary to reform our criminal justice system. The circumstances surrounding Lillian Polanco's death are too common. A young person of color is arrested on a low-level charge, cash bail is required, and time is spent in solitary confinement. This system can ruin lives, and we must change it. Um, with that being said, I want to thank our staff for helping to put together the hearing that we had earlier this year and for today's hearing. And I want to thank all the council members in attendance here. And we will, with that, um, move on to a vote. Thank you. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote. Committee on criminal justice, all items are coupled. Chair Powers. I vote aye. Richards. I vote aye. Amphrey Samuel. Aye. Rivera. A vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. I think we're going to just keep it open. We're expecting another council member. Okay. Go All ahead. items have been adopted by the committee. Okay. And we'll, and we'll keep it open. Thanks.